Hey guys, Merry Christmas. It is currently December 25th and I've just come back from my shift at work. As junior doctors, we are rotated in to work public holidays as well because unfortunately people don't stop getting sick. My shift today was eight to five in the accident and emergency department, which is basically covering all the people that come through the front door. I was feeling a little sorry for myself today when I was thinking that I had to work Christmas. Um, but one of the amazing things about medicine is that it always puts your life and your thoughts into perspective. I went to see a patient today while at hospital who had actually been admitted because her, their house had been burnt down. Uh, they'd lost all their possessions, they had no relatives around the area and couldn't travel because of London restrictions. And they essentially had to be remaining in hospital because they had no home to go to on Christmas Day. Seeing cases like that remind me to be grateful about the things that I have and the situation that I'm in, that even though I have to go into work on Christmas Day, first of all, the work that I do is such a rewarding career and I get to help so many people. But also, second of all, there are other people who are less fortunate than you are that might not have the same things like a warm home or family and friends to support and care about you. So. In that sense, this year, 2020 Christmas, I am grateful. Before we started working here, we were given the options to select our schedules, which basically essentially gave us the option of whether we wanted to work Christmas Day and New Year's or take those off and work other days. I know a lot of my colleagues tried to prioritize getting Christmas and New Year's Eve off because they obviously wanted to go home and spend time with their families. I guess I wasn't as fussed because I knew I wouldn't get to travel home anyways. For those of you who know me or have seen my previous videos, my family are originally from Hong Kong and my sister, parents, grandparents are all back home this year celebrating Christmas together. Of course, I probably would have wanted to go home more than anything, but I knew it wouldn't be possible. So I just thought, you know, I'm not that bothered about working Christmas and New Year's. To me, it's just another day. So I might as well work it and then give someone else the opportunity to get to go home and see their family. You know, it would mean so much more to them. In a way, I guess I just felt resigned to it and I suppose that's just international kid life. I mean, you obviously don't get to travel every single time you have a holiday and that's just the way it is. Unfortunately, I know that because of COVID, this hasn't happened for a lot of my colleagues and friends, which really, really sucks, but we move. It's funny because I actually worked Christmas Day last year as well. I remember this time last year, I was just preparing for my night shift on general surgery in my old hospital. I remember reading Adam Kay's book, Twas the Night Shift Before Christmas, and thinking, I can really relate to that. Um, and here I am, the second year in a row, working Christmas, so feel like I'm right on track in that junior doctor life. But you know, actually, it wasn't such a bad shift. First of all, it wasn't a busy of a shift. People obviously only want to come into hospital over Christmas if they're really, really sick. Everyone is super festive. I think a lot of people were wearing decorations and ornaments and colored hair ties. And I got to see and catch up with some of my friends as well that I was working with. So actually, all in all, it wasn't a bad shift at all. One thing that I have noticed that lots of my friends and family have been asking about is the number of cases of COVID. Obviously, there's a lot of concerns regarding the new variants in the UK and particularly in London going down into tier four. As a junior doctor working in a &E, I probably see the most COVID there is in the department. I have to say there are definitely a lot more cases of COVID that we've noticed in the last week or two. I probably see myself around two to three patients a day in a single shift and I'm just one doctor out of about seven or eight doctors in the department. You can't really differentiate clinically between patients that come in with the old variant and new variants. One thing that I have seen though is a spectrum of presentations across various age groups as well. You have a very young and also very old people coming in, uh, feeling a bit short of breath with a bit of a cough, a bit of a change of taste and smell, but otherwise completely fine. And then you have some people who come in really, really ill and unwell. And I don't really want to scare anyone, but I have seen cases of multi-organ failure, patients with uh, heart inflammation, lung inflammation, I think the bottom line is that we don't really know how it affects each individual and it's really hard to predict. Hopefully with the vaccine rolling out as well, this should reduce the incidence rates. They've started giving it to healthcare workers across the NHS and I'm hopefully going to get mine in the next week or two. But for now, all we can do is wait and continue doing what we can for the community. COVID has been one thing that I don't think anyone has been able to predict this year. And truthfully, it has sucked for a lot of people, 
for those who have lost loved ones, those who have lost their jobs and are undergoing financial difficulties, those who are isolated and feel alone and can't reach out for support because of isolation and social distancing. COVID has taken a toll on all our lives and shown us how quickly the world can change. And for a lot of us, it's caused us to have to reevaluate our life thoughts and reflections and directions. So personally as well, I've found myself feeling a bit down in the last couple weeks to months. I think that obviously I miss my family and I would like to go home and it just sucks this little I know that's not possible, but also even just small things like not being able to leave the house or go to do fun things like exploring London or meeting up with friends. I think especially with the emotional load that working in the hospital brings on me, I need to look for avenues to sort of diverts my emotions and feelings and I don't feel like I've really been able to do that to be honest. The way I've been dealing with it is just from listening to music, going on walks, taking more photos and working on things that I'm really interested and passionate about like my photos and making videos and content and also just my work. They keep me busy and I try to look for light at the end of the tunnel so I hope you guys can too. Amidst the hardships and difficulties that we face this year, I also just think that it's very important to try and recognize the good things that have come out of 2020. How mankind has been able to link with each other in solidarity throughout this pandemic, working together internationally to create a resource and vaccine and research to enable us to roll it out across the world. Countries working together for humanitarian efforts and supplies and I think it just goes to show you what mankind can achieve when we really work together. I mean, creating teamwork and community is what drives mankind forwards. And I really hope that we get to see more of that in the world down the line. So that's it guys. I just wanted to share with you guys what's been going on in the hospital. Stay safe, look after yourself, the people around you and your mental health. Reach out to your friends to see how they're doing and whether they need any support and have a lovely New Year's.